Hi, I'm Patty with Studio Art 12 Stencils, and today we are going to paint this wonderful dreamy Halloween project. We've got a dreamy background, so it's super kind of magical. We're going to glitter through our stencil. We're going to add some embellishments, and we have exclusive kits for this. Um, so you want to make sure that you don't miss out because they're on our website, um, studior12.com, and you're going to have a lot of fun. All right, guys, let's get started. I've got my background painted blue and it's dry. But before we get too far along, I want to talk about our giveaways. So we're live on Facebook, which means that we are going to be giving away prizes live. So we're gonna have our two brush sets. Um, these are a $24.99, I think, retail value. And they're gonna be given away during this show. And our grand prize is gonna be for a Studio R12, hello, um, cup. And it is engraved with our logo and they keep beverages chilled and it's all the great things. So don't forget to like, share and comment to get entered in that. And now I want to get ready to show you this dreamy background. There's a couple ways to do this. Um, one is with water and one is with a medium. If you use the medium, it's drying time extender. The drying time extender um, really extends the time, but water is a little bit easier. So I'm using water today, but if you get stuck, you might want to try the drying time extender. I'm going to get my oval glaze brush. This is a brush that is um, fanned out this way, and it is also shaved that way and that way. And it gets really big and awesome when you get it wet and do the stuff. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to wet my board. If you're going to hang your board outside, you want to seal it with um, Verithane. And I use DecoArt. I love DecoArt products. Um, but any that you trust and love will work. And so I'm just gonna get this evenly wet. You could use a roller to do this. Um, a foam brush would probably be good as well, just because it carries a lot more water. We're gonna get out a really bright blue. So it's a kind of a, I don't even know what you, marine blue. And I'm going to shake my paint because this one has not been shaken. Um, these are honey bottles and we use these to fill um, our paints because we buy them in bulk and we paint a lot of, a lot of projects a month. I'm gonna wet my brush, I'm gonna pick up my blue and I'm just gonna re-wet it evenly, pick up more water. You kind of, you can be too wet, but like you don't wanna puddle, but you want it to be like wet from edge to edge. Everything that we're going to be doing is called a wet in wet blending project or technique. So remember to ask questions. We are live right now. Um, if you're catching this live, um, we are live with Noel or Lena um, and they're going to answer questions for you um, in real time so that you get the answer right now. So make sure that you say where you're from. Tell us. Um, where you're from and what you're doing and what kind of painter you like, what kind of painter, what kind of things you like to paint. All right, I am picking up a dark teal. I'm going to call that a medium teal. It's not very dark. Um, I do have a lighter teal, so that one has just a little bit more white. You could mix white into this one and then you would have your lighter teal, so you don't have to do that. And then in through the middle, and I use a squint, te a squint technique when I'm doing this. So I'm going to lay it down. I'm just, just flipping the end of the brush. I'm really not pushing. If I was pushing, it would look like that. And I can blend that out. If you find that things are drying and you are unhappy with things, I'm um, going to stop right there. This is a slip slap technique. So I'm doing like a series of X's to blend it. If I need to pick up some more blue, I can do that. You really kind of are walking back and forth um, into your paints. 
I can pick up water, mix it in with my colors. I love these techniques because you can just keep kind of dancing around on the surface. If you've ever wanted to like ice skate or um, do like some kind of competition like that, this is like as close as you'll get with a paintbrush because you just can move the paint around and just be like sliding this way, going that way. It's very fun. Okay, do that. Pick that up. I'm gonna look down at my original and make sure I'm kind of keeping it sort of similar. Looking at pictures is never wrong when you're painting. Um, you wanna always have like a reference point. Um, I once painted murals with a gal named Barb who is like the most amazing woman. Um, but she was like, you always have to have a visual representation of what you're doing. So don't feel like you have to create blind. Okay, and so now I'm going to go into some purple and I'm gonna mix some water in it. And I'm just gonna mix in where the darker areas are. Notice I'm just Xing, Xing, Xing. If I end up with a harsh something or another, and then I can't, can't even make it happen, um, I can just X it away. If I end up with like a line right there, I can pick up some blue dirty brush. And I would say that this is probably a little bit more of an advanced technique. Um, this is not something that, so I don't think beginners can't do it. I think that beginners can do it better because beginners trust um, and they don't know where the problems are. I think advanced people think about it too much. So if you're a beginner, don't be afraid because you're not thinking about it too much, but just know that you have to trust yourself and then know that you can paint it until it's pretty. And so if this isn't right, then do it one more time. And I can like literally go over this whole thing and just kind of get rid of it, you know? And then I can pick up my teal and I can go back in there and I can paint it until it's pretty. This is like literally like the best things that you can ever tell yourself is paint it till it's pretty. I'm gonna pick up some water. Anytime I feel like I'm struggling to keep things moving, I'll pick up water. And over here, you can tell that this area right here is drying. And so that means that I need to move in with a little bit of the blue and just wet that area. The drying time extender that I was talking about um, will keep that wet for a good long time, um, but it also gets a little sticky and then you have to allow it to dry. So there's like benefits to it, but also things that you don't want to deal with. So this looks very dry to me as well. So I'm going to pick up some purple and work in the purple. We are going to um, film this one until we get done with the, the wonderful background. And then next week, we're gonna pick up with the finishing steps. Um, that way it's just not too much to watch all at one time when we all have busy schedules. Remember to like and share, tell us where you're from. Um, tell us what you like about our stencils, what your favorite one is. And please, please, pretty please, post your pictures of your projects um, because we get inspired by you guys too. So it goes both ways. All right, so I've got my purple down and I'm liking like where it's placed, but I'm gonna mix a little bit of the teal in with my purple because I want my purple to brighten up where it comes in contact with my turquoise. And I'm using turquoise and teal kind of together and I'm not meaning to. All right, so we'll just move that around and then squint at it, back away from it, squint at it. Do I like that? Maybe I'll wipe my brush clean. Maybe I'll pick up a little bit of extra teal. Go back in. It's gonna brush mix with the purple. And I'm, I'm kind of doing this like dancing thing. Um, it'll kind of do what it's supposed to do almost by itself as long as your medium is wet. Okay, and I tippy toe. Um, I do like to paint standing up when I'm stenciling or doing a background. Um, I do have this at counter height. If you're trying to paint at a tabletop, um, that's a tricky thing to do. So um, make sure if you're trying to stand up and do it, make sure you're not way down at um, tabletop level. Pick up a little bit more of my turquoise. And now I'm starting to just kind of make it dreamy. turquoise plus purple. So remember, oh, 
I know what I want to tell you. So we're painting Halloween on October 1st at 8 o'clock um, Eastern time. We are going to have a Halloween special that will be live with guest artists and giveaways. We're gonna have a hundred dollar like shopping spree. Um, we're gonna have a bunch of things to give away. Like it's going to be extremely, I'm gonna weigh this napkin down. Um, it's gonna be extremely fun and off the hook. It's gonna be great. So talk myself a little bit dry. I do that like a lot. So I'll go back and now I talk myself into turquoise. So I'll go back into my purple. So see that like perp, that teal blob, turquoise blob there. I'll go back over that and just blend it in with water. Water is your friend. It will correct all the mistakes in the world. Okay, and now we'll go over here where it's dry. I'll blend that in. If I did not seal this board on back and front, um, if you don't seal your board and you're using a lot of water, sometimes you might get a bow in your board, whether you're dealing with hardwoods or even um, like I'm on MDF. If you get that, don't worry, it will dry flat, but if you're gonna store it or hang it outside, then you wanna make sure that you're using a sealer on both sides and that will prevent any bowing and any of that instability. So, um, but if it's doing it while you're using a lot of water, don't worry about it. So I'm gonna go back into a little bit more purple. Okay, and I think what I'm gonna do right now, if I keep blending this at this stage, I'm gonna keep wetting and blending and over blending. And if you over blend, then you're gonna make some mud. So what I'm gonna do is let this dry and I'm gonna pull out my second board that I prepped so that you can see. So this is where I'm at on this board. And I've got one prepped. And so now this is all nice and dry. I love it. I'm gonna go into my dome brushes and get a new paper towel that is dry. So when we're using our dome brushes, if I was to use this wet paper towel um, and I picked up any of that wetness then it would make the paint just like slide around. Um, you don't want that, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And I use a double thickness and um, fold it in half so that I get like a good like rub off kind of thing. So I don't think if I'm looking at, I'm gonna grab it from the floor here. If I'm looking at this one, um, this teal is way brighter and the purple is even a little bit brighter. So what I want is a little bit of a brighter thing because I want my black letters to really pop off of the surface. Right now, they're not really popping off the surface. So I want to make sure that I make it bright enough that they pop. Okay, so we're going to go into teal. Our teal is going to be kind of our like mixing um, our mixing medium. We're gonna see if it's too bright by itself, so I'll rub it off. So this is different than stenciling. Um, you can have like moisture on your brush. You can have a um, completely dry brush. You can have whatever you need, but watch what happens. I almost guarantee you it's gonna be chalky. And chalky means that it is going to have like, um, like if you scratched your skin and you had those dry lines, that's the chalky look. Um, I bet you I'm going to have that because I don't think this has been built up to the bright level yet. Okay, so I'm going to go. Yep. Woohoo! Okay, so best erasers ever are your fingers and your thumbs. So I can do two things. I can dry off some more on my paper towel, which I had a lot of paint on there. But I can also go into a little bit of my blue and I can mix it. Brush mix, just a dab will do ya. And so if I'm looking at my paper towel, Notice that that's my teal and now that's my blue and my teal. So those two things in this area are gonna be a perfect match. Okay, so, excuse me. And then I'm gonna use really light pressure because obviously I had way too much pressure earlier. Okay, so see how that's brightening that area? And I can do little swirls. If I wanna make magic dust, I can swirl along. and it will start dreaming along, like you're telling a little ghost story. I can X. Yeah, super fun. Sandra Malone is a person that I watched years ago that did a dreamy thing on a Cinderella 
box, I don't know how many years ago it's been, I think maybe 20 or 30 years ago. Um, and she had this dreamy smoke thing and I learned from her, oops, so too much, dry off some more. If you're getting the chalky lines, then you're too bright. And my, my touch is literally like baby touch, like I'm brushing off a little powdery dust. And I'm getting a little bit of crinklies, dry off a little bit more, because crinklies is technical terms, right? Remember um, to tell us where you're from. Remember, I'm always trying to remember that this is social media. Um, so we have a YouTube channel. You can watch this way later. If you catch this and I'm talking to you about Facebook or any of this kind of stuff, don't be afraid. Just watch it for the technique. Um, but do like um, subscribe, click the bell, do that kind of thing so that you know where to find us the next time. We have a lot of videos. We have a big, long plan of things coming. So there will be a lot to learn. I've been doing this for 30 years and I love it, love it. Okay, so I'm getting my blues in. Yeah, see how that's much brighter? It's better. So it's just dancing, it's scrubbing, it's moving. I'm, I'm Xing, I'm squiggling. I'm circling. Don't be afraid of your brush. And then don't you love that we haven't changed out of like, my, look at, no, uh, none of these brushes in that bucket yet. But we can now pick up purple and we can go into the purple. And I'll do that dirty brush, but I think I wanna pick up a little bit of my teal as well because I think it'll be lighter than I think it is. Okay, so that's gonna be my middle area. Ooh, ha ha ha. Okay, so chalky, that's what chalky looks like. And that happens to me every time I do a technique like this. Um, like every time I'll be like, oh, that was too much whatever going on. But that's how I know what my balance level is. And if it stinks, come on in here with some water and it's gone. So you don't have to worry about it being bad. Like it's forgiving as I'll get out. Okay. Oops. Um, we have a new segment also called um, Ask Carrie that I think you guys are gonna like. And don't forget about a Halloween special. If you like Halloween, this is gonna be so much fun. Like I can't wait. Okay, so I'm picking up paint. It's gonna be super juicy and wet. Um, so I'm gonna need to really wet or wipe off the brush. So, I mean, I'm working the paint off. So let us know what you think about dividing up these segments. Um, it's an interesting thought. Um, I just feel like sometimes these climb into one hour um, because like we have a lot to say and we wanna share, but um, I feel like Sometimes you just need to go to bed at night or whatever and not have to watch the whole thing. So let us know what you think. Um, let us know if you can find us on YouTube. Like talk to us. We want to hear what you have to say. I'm going to pick up more purple. And, and I've got a kind of a magic trick that I think you're going to love. We get just a little bit more teal. I'm gonna do something scary. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the purple area with my teal and it's gonna be super bold and super bright and super scratchy. Okay, well, it wasn't super bold and super bright, but you know what I mean. It was more than I wanted. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in this area. Connect it. It's starting to look blue. It's starting to read blue. So I'll just connect those two areas. That's what I want. Anyway, okay. Into the water and then out comes the oval glaze. And out comes another paper towel. Gonna just blot it, but pick up some controlled. When I'm doing controlled water, I am pushing against the side of my water basin. Um, if I just dip in the middle, then I'm gonna have like, like water. 
but if I dip it against the side, then it will control it. And then I do one single blot. If I go into my purple and mix it in and blot it, I can glaze that area using that slip slap. Okay, and see how my dustiness just changed to purple. It's like magic. So one thing that you'll see from me in the next coming um, videos is that I love to do these backgrounds. You will almost always see me doing some crazy background. Okay, so if you like this kind of thing, then you'll wanna watch for it. Okay, so as I'm getting a little distance, there's like a little storm brewing here, so I'm kind of digging it. And they're always gonna be different. If you look at the one that I painted before and this one, and the one that I, I've done earlier, you're gonna be like, oh, these don't all look the same, but that's okay, um, because it's gonna all have like a little bit of DNA on it. I'm gonna hit the blow dryer for a second. Um, that's how you are going to um, control your background when we get to the next step. Sorry for the noise. So if it's wet or if it's cold, it's wet. And mine is a little bit cold. However, what I'm gonna do next, I don't think is gonna impact that. If I was going to tape my stencil down, then I would not, I would blow dry this quite a bit more. But since I'm not going to tape, it's just a little bit tacky and it's been drying through the process, I think I'm gonna be okay. So, another paper towel. And we've got the star stencil. And it is, whoops, um, STCO 286. Um, we have a whole series of these like tool stencils, I almost call them. Um, they're, this is a six by six, and it is a stencil that has like stars. I don't know, um, I've been a little bit scarred by stars, I'll tell you. Um, if you have to try to paint each of those little peaks on a star, on a bat, um, there's a bunch of different like little um, confettis and things like that. I have painted these things by hand without a stencil and it's stupid. So I'm just gonna say it, it's just dumb. But if you use a stencil, it's super easy and it goes really fast. So watch how many stars I can sprinkle in this background without any mess or fuss. So I'm gonna go into my um, teal, my turquoise. You're welcome for all the vocabulary words. Um, and I'm just going to now, the first thing I'm gonna do, remember when I did that really strong and it came up like super bright, I'm gonna go into my bright area and I'm gonna dust because this is my first delivery off of this brush. So I'm just gonna dust, super soft, and I'm gonna hold it down and peek. That looks about right. So I'm gonna move it and then I'm gonna maybe go into a small star. You thought all star, now we're small stars. I don't know what that means. But let's go over here, get some more stars. And see how that one's brighter? If I'm looking at my stencil and I'm putting it down in the middle, which is where it's gonna go, um, I don't think that's gonna interfere. I wouldn't wanna do a whole bunch of bright things where busy things were happening, if that makes sense. So now I'm just gonna start spreading stars around and I can keep using the same brush and I can do them if I'm going way out here and I'm in the black area. You know what? I did not show you that. Let me show you that real quick. Sorry about that. I don't know what I just did, but I spattered. I have black on my palette because the edges are black. And I forgot. So I'm gonna get some water in the tip of my brush and just work some black in. Then you go around the outside edge and you would do this on the previous step and I apologize for missing that. But you're going to work your black around the edge. And then you can pick up extra and you can do this later too. Like you can do it after, after you get the stars and everything done. But I can pick up more, I can mix in some blues that kind of thing. But that's how I got a little bit of this darkening around my edge. So sorry, I missed that step. Okay, we'll get a brush. 
Now let's go into hmm, turquoise again. Turquoise is like the balancy color. I do think I'm going to get out some of the light. Haha. -ha. Okay, so paints separate, and if you don't shake them and you don't use them for a while, and I have a stock in this drawer, and I have a stock in the sample painting room, and I have a stock here, and I've got them everywhere. So it just depends on where we're painting from and what paints we're using. All right, so we're going to get out the lighter. And that's going to be brighter still. So if we're doing that, we want to make sure that that's what, ooh -ha. softer pressure. So see how that really shows up? And then we'll go different sizes. You want to make sure that you're using different sizes. And if I wanted to be like super bold or whatever, I could go in with like something and I could stipple it and see how strong that is versus just doing this misty dreamy thing. So if I need that to back off, I can go into my water and I can make it go away. Okay. And now I can give it just a little glimmer and now it's better. And I think I'll mix into some purple. This is very, very subjective. Okay. Um, all of our paintings are, and you know what, can I just say this? Um, I don't know which customer um, it was, one of our stencil fans that um, was on our um, Facebook channel and they were saying how they had never painted anything that wasn't just black and white um, and like I was like whoa you know that's amazing like incredible to me because I don't do anything in black and white but like it's so much fun to do this like bursts of color especially seasonally so if you're doing a Christmas sign or a Halloween sign or an Easter sign like have fun with it and just blow some color out that was spitting that was extra free good okay so now we'll do some purple but don't be afraid of color color is super fun and then if you're online um i did see some comments um through um i think one of the last um lives that we did that people didn't know how to pick their colors so what I, I do, what I call palette shopping, um, and palette shopping means that you go onto Pinterest or Google or wherever you're at, and you go find colors that make you happy. Like you scroll through the thing and you'd be like, these are colors that are perfect. And it can be on a Halloween sign. Right. It could be on a, a, the marketing for a beer box. It can be wherever you find your happiness, then just go ahead and just take the colors it's green it's orange it's yellow all together do that and then you can borrow a palette so don't feel like you have to make this up you know you know what you like when you see it you know and then for years i didn't realize i was a a green yellow um a green yellow red person but i then i one day i realized in my house everything that i have is like green yellow and red and then it made it much easier for me to shop for things that I was trying to um, decorate my house with. All right, so we're gonna pop a few more in there. And we're gonna stop here in just a hot second because we've got this part done. And there's a little bit too, we're gonna do drop shadowing in the second part. We're gonna do glittering through a stencil um, in the second part and we're gonna do embellishments. So we're gonna do these embellishments and we're going to be glittering and painting these as well. So there's things to learn and there's things to know. Um, I'm gonna take this through to spattering. Um, so I'm gonna keep going, stop standing still and get going. And then we're gonna finish up. So make sure you're like sharing and commenting so that you are entered to win the dome brushes. Um, on the dome brushes, normally, um, if you've seen our videos, you might notice that people, the people that are doing our lives, um, we've got a couple of us doing them, but uh, people that are doing the lives, they'll be like one brush in the water, one brush in the water. You can't use these dome brushes wet. They have to completely dry. It does take like more than a day to get them completely dry. Please, like, I don't care if you buy our brushes, but make sure when you're doing your brushes, make sure you own a body of them. I'd say like a good about like that amount. That will get you through a whole project, give you a day or two to dry, and you're gonna be awesome. Okay, so, a 
couple out here in the borders. I'm going to have spider webs here and here. So maybe I don't need. Last couple things. Remember our Halloween special. It's coming up. It, I can't believe how close we are to Halloween. Um, if you're catching us later on YouTube, um, sorry you missed all the fun, but make sure that you like our Facebook page and then you'll be alerted to when we have live things that are going on. Okay, I'm going to put the star stencil away. Um, if you need to wash the stencil, so it's got some grub and grime on it now, um, you can do hot soapy water. You can use warm soapy water um, and put it in the bottom of your sink, fill it to, you know, like that much, and then gently with a little brushy thing, just um, swish off the color. So you don't have to scrub it and you'll catch the edges and stuff if you're not careful. So that's how you wash a stencil. I never wash my stencils unless, um, I do, might be at a stencil company, so I might not need to, but I have in the past washed them when I had like five or six coats of paint um, when I'm teaching like at a convention or something like that. Um, they get like, you lose the detail. So until there's five or six layers, I wouldn't bother. All right, so we're gonna spatter now and then we're gonna be done for this episode. And I'm so glad that you joined us. Um, please let us know what you liked about this episode and please let us know what you wanna see for future episodes. And please say hi to Noelle and Lena. If I'm doing this, I'm probably not doing that. So anyway, so we're gonna pick up our rake brush. Um, this is super fun. One of my favorite techniques um, is spattering. This is a rake brush and I'm gonna get this on here. You want to splay that thing out to like, like a sun um, and see how that is just cut and see how it holds the, holds out the like splayed outness. I don't know what that term is, but that's the one I'm using. And I'm going to go into the lighter teal with a little bit of the darker teal that's mixed with whatever gunk they hold paint together with. And I'm going to get a hard, heavy surface. Um, you always want to test off on your palette. Um, you never, ever want to do this near a neighbor's glasses or their Gucci purse. Um, one of our customers one time came and painted with us and they splattered their brand new $300 boots. Don't do that. So you want to suck your belly up close, test it over here. And then once you've spat and you can see like so much stuff right there in the brighter areas. I'm gonna hold this still and I'm gonna tap this. And that will make like a snow. And then if I tap it really hard, it'll spray. And then that kind of completes our dreamy. I wanna do a couple fat ones. Thought it was done. Okay, if I want to be precise with my spattering, so see this star right here? If I wanna make that star seem like a magical star, I can come down here and I'll back it away just a little bit. So I'm anchoring over here, backing it away, but anchoring is the key here. If I tap it, it'll tap just on that star. So it's like controlled spattering, it's magic dust. Okay, and I'm squinting, maybe. Okay, all right, that was fun. I hope that you guys had fun too. Um, I hope it kind of blew your hippie noodle just a teeny bit and that you learned some things. And join us next week. We are going to film the rest of this and we're gonna show you how to complete it. Remember that we have exclusive um, sets on our website. It's studior12.com and that's studio with the R and 12. Um, that was 12. Yeah, could you read that? Anyway, um, go there, check us out, um, like us, love us, do all the things because algorithms are everything when you're in small business and join us next week. We'll see you then. Bye. Hey friends, wasn't that a spooktacular class with Patty? Well, I have an exclusive offer for you on the board, the stencil, and the embellishments 
so you can do this project at home. We have never done this before and it is something you are going to want to go do right now because we have a very limited offer and you are not going to want to miss out on this sweet treat. And don't forget, coming up on October 1st at 8 p.m., we are having our live Halloween party so one hour, it is going to be amazing. Now costumes aren't required, however, we do recommend you pulling out your favorite Halloween photo because it might help you win a prize. Speaking of prizes, we are giving away prizes every 10 minutes and our grand prize is going to blow your socks off. We will see you here on 